people do things that are not right. And I'm not going to preach on this really at all on, on the, the fact that, you know, having multiple wives is not something that's condoned in scripture. It's not something that God intended to do. It's not something that we should do just because people did it throughout history. Just because even people who were used of God and did great things of God had multiple wives does not mean that it's something that God wanted them to do. Uh, the Bible t talks about in just one instance, in many instances, but in one instance, you know, uh, the king is not supposed to multiply wives unto himself. Now, Gideon wasn't a king. He refused to be a king. But at the same time, I mean, whether it's a king or, or anyone else, you shouldn't be multiplying wives. I think the, one of the reasons why it makes sense just for a king, because it's possible for a king to multiply wives just because a king is going to have a lot more um, money, <laughs> you know, a lot more financial support to be able to support that many wives. I mean, they have a lot of wives that cost money because the, the man's supposed to be providing for his wives, let alone spending the time and everything else. But I don't want to get into the whole thing on, the, on that. But the reason why I'm even bringing this up, this is this concubine. And, you know, when you make mistakes, because this is definitely a mistake for him to be going in unto his concubine and having a son by him, you know, sometimes the ramifications are huge. He probably went to his grave thinking, wow, I, you know, I've done a lot. I've served the Lord and I have, I have 70 children, his posterity, right? His sons, 70 sons and not even talking about daughters. He's got, I've got 70 sons that'll, that'll follow after me, right? What a comfort or peace of mind that probably was to him. But then not much longer after that, he's got a wicked son that he had with his concubine that goes and kills basically all of the other, all of the children that he had. Now we know that, that, you know, one got away, but what a, what a great loss that is. What a great, uh, great destruction that all came years down the road, much later on as a result of that action that he took with his concubine and having that concubine and having, you know, a child with that concubine. And, you know, this is just one more example. The Bible has many examples like this on how serious just, just committing those sins can be. And, you know, watch out for fornication. Watch out for, for doing these acts and getting involved in these sins where at the time you might think everything's going great. At the time, you don't seem like there's any problems or any, any negative consequences as a result of your sin, and you could fool yourself into thinking that everything's just fine when it's really not. And it wasn't the case here. Now, I don't know if Gideon reaped anything further on down the road in his life, but I guarantee you that, that you know, that's still an impact for him, having lost his children like that. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal. No one, I wouldn't want that to happen to my kids after I pass on, right? Just because I'm no longer here doesn't mean I would want that to happen. I mean, I'm still alive. When I die, I'm going to have, I have eternal life. I'm still going to be alive. I'm going to be in heaven, you know, and I'm not going to want those types of things happening to my children, to my flesh and bones. And that's, you know, he had that happen to his, and that's a result directly of his own sins. Now, um, 